What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina and today's video is going to be an actual vlog style video. This is not something that we do very much of, although I do do the intros on the search and recovery videos, but I want to actually make a, a solid day vlog video for you, showing you what I do as a dive professional every single day. Uh, a lot of you guys see little segments of it when we do search and recovery or if I do video lessons, something like that. But I'm going to take you start to finish of how my day goes and what it's like being a dive professional. But uh, first thing today, i got to get my little rug rat back here to the school. We've got Miss Tessa. This is my oldest daughter. Say hey, Tessa. Hello. <laughs> i got to get her over here to school, and then i got to get to the shop. I've got quite a bit on the schedule today. Uh, I've got to put some orders in. I have a checkout student coming in, or an open water checkout student coming in to do checkout dives number three and number four. Uh, so we'll get her certified this morning. And then I have a, another student coming in who has taken her reactor eye and a rescue course. So got her coming in around six o'clock this evening. So I've got a little bit of time gap in there, but I've got some gear repairs to do. I've got several tanks that just got back in from hydro and I've got to get them vised up, cleaned up and of course filled. So got all that to do and whatever else comes through the day. So we'll see what comes along. But like I said, guys, I wanted to take you along with me. I wanted to show you what it's like to be a dive professional, at least here in our area. Of course, if I was in the tropics, it may be a little bit different. But here in our area, I want to show you what it's like to be an instructor and a shop owner. So come along with us today and see what we get into. All right, guys, it is 9.25. I've got about 35 minutes to get what I need done on the computer taken care of. And then i got a young lady coming in around 10 o'clock this morning to do some checkout dives. We're finishing up dives three and four. Hopefully, I'll be able to take you, on with, or take you along on those dives with us. Uh, I do have one of my dive master candidates coming in to help film. That way I don't have to worry about filming while I got a student in the water. But I've got a lot to get done in the next 35 minutes before she gets here. And then I've got some equipment repairs to do. I've got two tanks that just got back from hydro. I've got to get them vised up as well. And then I have a react right and a rescue student coming in uh, this evening at six o'clock. So I've got to go through their paperwork. Uh, I've got both my open water student and rescue student here. I've got their stuff I've got to go through. but. Uh, just to kind of show you what I do here to, to start my day off after I do all the books and all that. Right now I'm looking at scheduling. I've got my calendar up here and I'm just kind of reviewing everything that I've got to do. So at 10 a.m. I've got my uh, checkout student in open water. Uh, I've got to do some equipment repair today. A gentleman brought us his tanks last week. We just got them back from hydro yesterday and I'm just now getting a chance to get them vias and field. And then of course I've got a rescue student or a react right and rescue student coming in at six. So I've got to do that. But first thing this morning, I've got to put orders in. Um, I've got to place an order. I've had some special orders with Marez, uh, some free diving gear that I've got to get ordered for a gentleman. I've got to get it here by the end of the week for him. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm actually going through uh, all my orders just to see if there's anything else that I need um, because we have to place a, a certain amount order with every item so every time I click on something I got to make sure it adds up to a certain certain amount so I'm just going through verifying I've already actually did inventory this morning I've went through the store just to see what I've got um, but I'm gonna place this order real quick and give it a, give Marez a call get some gear ordered and then uh, we'll get started with our checkout dive here around 10 o'clock all right, guys, I'm going to take a quick break here. I want to show you something. I, I just got my orders placed and flipped over to our YouTube page, and I've got a ton of questions i got to go in here and answer. But I wanted to show you this, guys, for a couple of reasons. One, uh, we try to answer every question that y'all ask us here on YouTube. Uh, it doesn't matter how if it's a good question, a bad question. We don't believe there's no such thing as a dumb question. Uh, we try to answer them all. If it's a, Even if it's a comment that's, that's, say, derogatory or even in a manner that is meant to start an argument, we still try to answer the question in an intelligent way. And I just want to show you, I'm going to turn the camera here for you. Uh, this is just our, our uh, video screen or our comment screen here. And if I scroll down, you'll see that every single comment here, there's always a reply uh, because we, we truly read every single comment that comes in. Um, I'm getting text here on my phone. Um, we, we try to get or try to read, good Lord, we try to read every single question or, or comment that comes through our channel and we truly answered. I mean, you can see uh, Ivory responded to me here. Ivory Johnson did. I responded. Uh, got some advice from Tom Nelson, which is a great diver down in the South Carolina area, if you guys know him. 
uh, responded to him, of course. Henry Jones here asked me a question. Actually, I will be making um, a video on this one right here. Uh, Henry called me out on a mistake that I made in a video, which I'm going to make a response video to as well, just because um, I'm no different than you. I, I make mistakes like everybody else does. But he actually called me out on a video here, and it was very nice call. I mean, he didn't, he didn't say anything bad. He just said, hey, I think you made a mistake, blah, 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 which I did. And I responded, hey, I'm glad you saw that. Thank you for pointing it out to me. So, Henry, I'll be making you a video here very soon on that as well. Um, but we respond. I mean, you, I can click on every single one of these and you'll see a response. So when you guys comment on our videos, rest assured, we do read it. And I mean, I can go through all these. We read every single comment on our on our page. Uh, good ones, bad ones, it doesn't matter to us. We, we read them. Uh, and most of you guys do very well keeping them polite. If I make a mistake, just like Henry did, call me out on it. It's no big deal. I'll, I'll correct it or I'll correct myself on camera. It's no big deal. Uh, but I, I appreciate stuff like that because it keeps me honest. It also keeps me uh, wanting to educate myself other. But I've got a couple here that I'm going to try to get done this morning. I've got probably about another 20 minutes left. Um, and then I've got to run downstairs and get some gear ready for my student. But I just wanted to show you that real quick, guys. We do read your comments. We answer every single one the best we can. Even the ones that are meant that the trolls put on there to, to try to start an argument with it. We still answer it in a respectful way, in an educated way, or the, at least the best that we can. But guys, don't be afraid to comment on our videos. We thoroughly enjoy it. We appreciate every single one of our viewers, both our good viewers, our bad viewers. And my phone is literally blowing up this morning. Um, but I've got to go. The phone's ringing. I'm going to try to answer these questions, and I'll take you downstairs to show you how I set up for students. All right, guys, I've got to get ready for class. Got my student coming in here in about five, ten minutes. So she is doing checkout dives number three and four for her certification. And so I've already got her gear laid out here for her. Um, getting my gear going as well. Uh, once she gets here on three and four, we're going to be doing some emergency skills, of course, in the water. We'll also be doing mask removal and replace. She has to repeat that a couple times. And then we've also got some compass navigation stuff. So we'll actually be out here in the parking lot just prior to getting in the water, letting her practice that as well. If she wants to practice it on the surface a couple times in the water, we'll do it as well. But it looks like here comes my student. You can kind of see her pulling in up there. So I'm going to finish getting some gear together real quick and then I'll actually hand the camera off to my dive master candidate so that I can focus on my student. But come along with us and we'll see how good she does.
Megan, how do you feel? I feel good. Man. Good? Yeah. Dives three or four knocked out? Yep. What's the number one rule in scuba? Keep breathing. Cool beans. You and your husband going to jump in, right? Yeah. Guys, this is Michael and Rebecca. Rebecca just finished up her final checkout dive. This is her husband, Michael. We certified you back in July, correct? Yes. So, cool deal. We're going to change tanks out for her. They're going to jump in and go make a dive together as a family. But, Rebecca, congratulations. Thank you. You are a certified open water scuba diver. Woohoo! All right, guys, it's around 2 o'clock, and I'm headed away from the shop now. I'm actually going to a bike shop called Carolina Pedal Works, and one of the head gurus there is one of our divers. He's a real good friend of ours. Uh, I trained his wife up through the ranks in diving as well. But the reason I'm headed over there is they're kind of a partnering, bit, or a partnering business for us, and we actually got a display. We got a mannequin set up at their shop with a BCD, a reg, a wetsuit, the whole nine yards, and they actually sell tri scubas for us. So, and then of course we give them a cut to sell the class for us. Well, the reason I'm going over there is I need the BC that is on the mannequin that's there versus the BC that I've got in the shop. Um, I just did a pretty good purchase. I sold uh, some gear to a father and son dive team. And so the son needed a particular BC at a particular size. And that the only one that I had that would fit him for that particular BC is on this mannequin. So I'm taking one to replace that. I've got to get that one off. And then when I get back to the shop, I've got some regulators that they purchased as well that I've got to put together and adjust for them. Um, and then I've still got a couple of tanks to get done this evening before my student gets here because i got a React Right and Rescue student. So I don't got much time. I'm going to try to get me some lunch while I'm out. But uh, hopefully they'll let me film over here and I can introduce uh, the, the bike shop to you guys. I'll put all their information down below. So if you're a bike rider, if you like riding mountain bikes and street bikes or whatnot, I'll put all their information down below. So definitely give them guys some love and check them out. But, uh, but yeah, this is just another day for me. I mean, you get to see everything I'm getting to do. I put in orders. I teach. I do checkout dives. I do search and recovery. I do gear repair. This is just an everyday, seven-day-a-week thing for me. But come along with us and we'll uh, see what else we get into. All right, guys, we're here. Carolina Pedal Works. I got Mr. Kurt back here. Kurt's one of the head gurus. He's also one of our divers. Kurt, tell us a little bit of what you're doing. Uh, right now, I'm fixing this gentleman's bicycle. He came in to get a dropper post installed, something uh, that we commonly do here. Uh, awesome. One of the common upgrades for mountain bikes. But we we do it all. We sell bikes. We fix them. Sell parts. And uh, that's what keeps me busy most cool of the day. Deal. And y'all, most of you guys have seen our wall of fins at our shop. They literally have a wall of bikes back here. So it's amazing. Everywhere you look, there's bikes. They got wheels, tires, everything up above me. But uh, they are definitely the, the bike experts. So if you ride mountain bike or even on the street or whatnot, come check these guys out. I'll drop all their uh, information down in the description below, but definitely give them guys some love. And Kurt and his wife is actually, what, next week? Uh, yeah, the 13th. Like, yeah, 13th. On the 13th, days. they're headed down to Cozumel, Mexico to dive with us. So uh, you'll probably definitely be seeing them in some of our diving videos here really soon. But Yeah, so don't come into the bike shop then. Give, give me a week. <laughs> but like I said earlier, guys, our little display, if you can see it on camera, it's right back there on the corner there. So they uh, they display it for us. They sell tri scuba classes for us, and we kind of help it, each it shop out but uh yeah, i just want to introduce you to these guys if you ever got a question on bike definitely check these guys out all right guys we're down here in the workshop now it is 4 45 i've got about an hour and 15 minutes i've got a reg set here that i got to put together and i've got another reg set here that i've got to put together for some customers and get them adjusted i got to make sure the intermediate pressure is good make sure the cracking pressure is good on it and then one of the things that we do for all our customers, every time they buy a reg, whether they're a new customer or an old customer, we set up an inline adjustment tool. After we set the regulator up to factory specs, we put an inline adjustment tool on them, and we actually let the customer breathe off of it and adjust it to breathe the way he wants it to actually breathe. But, you know, it's his regulator. Why wouldn't you do that? So all that being said, I've got to kind of hurry. I've got about an hour and 15 minutes to knock out both of these regulators. I've got still two tanks that I've got to... Uh, get vised and filled and then I got my rescue student coming in around six o'clock this evening So I'm gonna jump on these real quick. I want to show you a couple of pointers real quick Let me get the camera adjusted for you. I want to show you some of the things that we uh, Look for or when we're setting up a regulator how we do it 
Um, the first thing I want to do, of course, is make sure I use proper tools to do this. Most regulators nowadays are universal when it comes to, to size of wrenches and stuff. A uh, four millimeter or number four size Allen head is all you need to pull out these port plugs. There are still some manufacturers on the market that use different sizing, but a four pretty much works for all the major manufacturers. Um, and I've actually already got the port plugs pulled out. But a, a couple of tools that you may want to put in your kit a 14 millimeter and a 17 millimeter and a 25. A 14 is typically a good size for the fittings where the hoses connect to the first stage. A 17 is usually good for the uh, connections between the second stage and the hoses. To, so two 17s work really good there. And of course a 25 is typically, the, the 25 millimeter is typically the nut size here for the first stage itself. So if you ever have a leak there and you keep thinking it's maybe the um, O-ring on the tank valve, a lot of times it might be this uh, yoke nut here. So carry you a 25 millimeter there, that usually works as well. Now, if you're not carrying the metric, maybe you're doing the Imperial wrenches, a half nine five is what you need. You need a half inch, a nine um, sixteenths, and of course a five eighths. Those are typically the three that you wanna go with. But I'm gonna set this up real quick, show you just how easy it is to do. Uh, and show you how we do it. I'm gonna take my alternate here and I'm just gonna make sure it's oriented properly. And I've actually already lubed these up. I use crystal lube here on these O-rings, so you can use any type of silicone, but crystal lube is typically what I'll use. And it's really per the manufacturer. If manufacturer says you gotta use a certain type of lube, then that's what you use. Uh, I typically use crystal lube on everything that I do, but I'm gonna put that on there as well. When I go to tighten this down, it's literally just gonna be snug, just hand tight. Everybody assumes that since we're dealing with high pressure that these things have to be torqued down. They really don't. Uh, they just got to be hand tight and snug down because the O-rings, that's what the O-rings are there for. It's there to seal. When you put pressure behind it, trust me, it'll seal. I'm going to go ahead and put the gauge on. Once again, I've uh, put some crystal loop here on the uh, O-ring that seals it. So I'm going to put my high pressure gauge on or the customer's high pressure gauge. Get it started. Once I've got it on, I'll kind of snug it down. Now, like I said, we set these up to factory specs for what the manufacturer says we have to. And of course, we let the customer kind of adjust it out the way he sees fit as far as what he wants it to breathe like. All right, I'm gonna put my low pressure line on. Now, the thing with the low pressure line, um, I'm not actually gonna leave this low pressure line on because the customer has actually requested a shorter low, low pressure hose. But I'm going to put this one on so I can check his intermediate pressure, make sure it's set to where the uh, manufacturer says it needs to be set at. And so I've got just a little IP gauge here, intermediate pressure gauge, and it just plugs right into a low pressure line. You can actually use an inline adjustment tool to do the exact same thing. Uh, I will caution you though that not two, there's no two gauges that always read the same. I've actually set this up several times where the, inter, the IP gauge reads different than the IP gauge here and it's coming from the exact same source. So there's no, no two gauges that's always going to read the exact same. Now, since I've got that done, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to hook it up to a cylinder, turn it on, make sure there's no leaks. And I'm going to check the IP just by putting a couple of squirts of air through it. And this one appears to be great straight out of the box, so that's a good thing. And I'm going to bleed it off. All right, make sure my air is turned off. And I'm actually going to take this low pressure line back off until we get his shorter hose. Uh, the BC, he's actually ordered a backplate and wing, and it comes with a much shorter uh, low pressure hose. You can see that, that low pressure hose is as long as the high pressure hose. So I'm going to take this one back off and put his port plug back in just to keep any dust and debris out. And then, of course, I've got one more reg set to put together here. And then I'm going to jump on the two tanks real quick, get them knocked out, get them vised and filled up uh, before my student gets here, and then go on about my day. So, All right, guys, so I'm getting finished up on the cylinders here. Uh, this is my last one to do. I'm just going through my 18-step process. You guys have seen how we vis tanks in the past, and I've talked about the different steps, what all we look for. Uh, both this one and the other one have just got back from hydro, so I'm just kind of going through it, making sure everything's good, checking the threads, checking the internal structure of the cylinder, making sure there's no rust or corrosion or anything like that. 
Of course, on aluminum, you ain't gonna have any rust, but uh, I'm gonna get finished up here real quick. And then, of course, I'll document these and get them filled up. And then I've got to rush upstairs. It's actually taking me a little bit longer than I thought, but I've got to rush upstairs and actually get the classroom set up for my student that's coming in. Uh, she is actually doing, and I lost my plug in. She is actually doing her react right and her rescue training. So I'm gonna get the classroom, get it, get it set up, get a mannequin set up for the react right portion. And then I've actually got to set up a scenario, which I'll show you what the scenario is in the classroom portion. So look down in here, don't see any corrosion, anything like that. All appears to be good with that one. Do a quick external inspection of the cylinder as well, then I'll throw a new sticker on it, put the valve back in. Um, I've actually already serviced these valves. Typically speaking, before we send it off for hydro, we go ahead and service the valves. So as soon as we get it back, all we've got to do, double check, make sure the threads are good, double check, make sure the uh, on and off knob's good. We replace this O-ring real quick, throw some crystal lube or some lube on it, screw it back in, throw a sticker on it, fill it. So I'm gonna finish up with this one real quick, get both tanks topped off, and then I'll show you how we set up the classroom. All right, guys, it's just about class time. It is 5.30, and I've got about 30 minutes before my student's going to show up. I've got to get the board cleaned off here. I've got to get the tables reset up. We've been doing uh, some filming for YouTube, not on this video, but we've been doing some filming for YouTube back here. So I've got to get the class set up, get the computer screen going, get my projector up and going, and get the classes. My student tonight is actually taking a React Right class, which is a first aid CPR AED and O2 certification. And then she's also starting her stress and rescue uh, class which is just a rescue diver course now what you're gonna see tonight or what I'm gonna try to put in the video of course is just small little segments of that and one of the things that we do during the rescue class is we teach you that the easiest way to solve a problem is to prevent that problem from ever happening so the the classroom part itself is all about preventing problems so the first thing that I do with students is I set up a tank a regulator and a BCD and then I give the student about 10 to 15 minutes to really do a good thorough gear check over it and to find all the little mistakes that I've kind of implemented into the system because the easiest way to fix a problem is of course preventing that problem from ever happening so we spend about the first 10 to 15 minutes going over those issues seeing if they find all the problems and then I'll show them how to fix it and then of course we commence with the class itself we go through the curriculum we use the slides we do scenarios in the classroom and then once all that's done, they take their written exam or their final exam. That's when we'll schedule their pool work. We take them to the pool. And that's where, of course, we teach them for the rescue portion. Okay, we've done everything that we can to prevent the problems. However, the problem still occurred. How do we handle it, either above water, underwater, or even on land or whatnot? So that's what we do in the pool. And then, of course, we do their three checkout dives for rescue where we actually present them with real-life scenario, real-world problems. And, of course, we see how they handle it. And then, of course, if they pass all standards, they get a rescue diver start as well. So i got a little bit of setting up to do. Like I said, I've got to get the computer up and going, get the projector up here up and going, and i got to get this board cleaned off because I've been doing some videos for it as well. But give me a few minutes to get this set up, and then, of course, I'm going to introduce you to my student when she gets here. All right, guys, I got just a few minutes left here before my student gets here. I want to kind of show you how we set up the classroom. Of course, I got the projector screen up and going. I've got to get our uh, slides up for both React Right and Stress and Rescue. I've got my gear set here that we're going to use for the rescue portion. 
which I'll come back to that here shortly. Got the student um, area all prepped up for her. Got her paperwork she's got filled out. Got some freebies there for her. And then of course we got our stuff for the reactor right. I've got to run out to my truck, get an AED because she's going to learn how to do that as well. We've got an O2 bottle here. I've got to get a uh, non-rebreather mask out of my truck as well so that she can figure out how to set that up and then of course we got miss uh little ann there our uh, rescue dummy so that we can learn how to do uh cpr stuff like that so this is what we got planned for tonight i want to come back over here real quick this is the setup i was talking about earlier where we take a tank a regulator and vcd and we cause all types of problems with it because we believe that in the rescue uh, class itself that the easiest way to solve a problem is to prevent the problem from happening. So that's what we use the classroom for, is we teach them how to prevent problems from ever occurring. And then in the pool or the confined water sessions, that's where we say, okay, we tried to prevent everything. However, problems still happen. How do we deal with it? And then of course, during the checkout portions or the final evaluations, which we do in open water, that's where we take everything that we've taught the students in the classroom to pool work and we kind of put it into real life scenarios. So what we're gonna do here, this. So once we finish the React Right class, her very first thing to do with this is she's going to take the BCD the tank and regulator, and then I'm going to actually go in the office. I'm going to give her about 15 minutes, and then she's going to come back and get me in 15 minutes, and she's going to say, okay, these are all the problems I found. Either it's missing an O-ring, or the yoke uh, nut here is loose, or maybe the BC is leaking because these are loose, or maybe the second stage is free-flowing. Uh, another little common problem that we cause for the student is we will thread the buckles the wrong way and see if they can figure it out. See if they can figure out why it's not getting tight for them because these are real world problems that we see a lot that may happen especially for divers that rent gear if they're not using their own gear maybe they only dive a few times a year when you use rental gear you never know what kind of problems you may occur from it so preventing a problem from happening is by far the easiest way to solve a problem and that's what we teach in the classroom and then of course when we get her into the pool we'll teach her how to fix problems that occur anyways and then of course we'll do our final evaluations but I'm gonna finish getting setting up here she should come in any second now and then we'll get going Absolutely. If you find a problem, I want you to fix it. Uh, fine. We'll turn the air on, check everything's fine. Okay. I would say there's not enough air. How much air is in it? Yeah. Very good. I <laughs> not to use this. Very good. That's exactly what I'm after. Knowing when to make that decision and making the decision before minor problems on the surface become major catastrophes under the water. That's exactly what this drill is meant to teach you. And you have to set your gear up, you have to do a proper pre-dive safety check to prevent problems from happening. And remember, preventing problems is the safest and easiest way to solve a problem, correct? Very good. All right, guys, so I just got finished up with Danny's class. We got all of React Right done. However, we just kind of started on the rescue. She's actually going to come back Tuesday night to finish up the academic part of rescue. And then, of course, I'll get her to the pool to learn the skills. It is 1119, as you can tell here by my watch. And I am, like, super tired. I'm ready to go home and see my family. But, guys, I just wanted to bring you on this journey with me today. I wanted to show you what I do every single day, start to finish. If I'm not doing checkout dives, I'm doing pool dives. If I'm not doing pool dives, I'm doing search and recovery dives. If I'm not doing that, I'm either here doing inventory, placing orders, doing things like that. I'm connecting with other businesses. I'm trying to get our company to grow as well. But I wanted to bring you along with me. If you're in the Hickory area, guys, please go by Carolina Pedal Works. I want to give them a huge shout out for letting me film at their facility today. If you're a bike rider, maybe you like mountain biking or whatnot, maybe you just need to have a little bike repair, go check those guys out. Kurt is amazing. I mean, he's, he's a doctor when it comes to mics. Let him work on your bike, definitely. But huge shout out to those guys. Guys, all their information will be down in the description below. I'm going to try my best to get this video edited for you tonight. Like I said, I wanted to bring you on this journey. I wanted to show you what it was like every single day for me, not only as a dive instructor, but also as a shop owner. Um, but I appreciate you coming along with me. If you like this video, simply hit that like button for me and definitely share it as well. But guys, if you want to see more vlog style videos like this, uh, definitely drop me a comment down below and let me know as well. But guys, I really appreciate you watching this video. As always, guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram 
Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.